Welcome back to freephotoshop.com and this week's free video tutorial looking at the burn tool inside Photoshop. Hopefully you'll know that the free Photoshop website has been revamped in recent months so check that out if you haven't already. Meanwhile we're going to hopefully get back to our weekly video tutorials starting this week with the burn tool. Now I'm using Photoshop CS4 but generally the burn tool works the same in all versions of Photoshop although we do have one additional feature inside CS4 that I'll show you very shortly. Before we do that however, I have an image open on screen called Stormy Skies, a photograph taken a few years back in the amazing American state of Utah. Now this is already a fairly dramatic image but I want to darken the skies to give the impression of a more intense storm on the brew and I can do that by using Photoshop's burn tool. So I'll start by coming over here to the toolbox and clicking and holding on the toning tools icon and then selecting the burn tool from the flyout menu. Now the burn tool is essentially a brush so it kind of works just like any other brush tool inside Photoshop. We have the options available from up here in the options bar and I'm going to go ahead and click the drop down menu and we can change first of all the size and the hardness and the type of brush that we're using. We can also access these options by right clicking inside the image window. We also have keyboard shortcuts available so the bracket keys as always make the brush larger or smaller and adding shift key to the bracket keys makes the brush either softer or harder. In any event the reason we would use the burn tool in the first place is so that we can paint in darkness to areas of the image. So in this case I want to make the sky darker to give us a stormier effect of course. So I'll make sure we've got a fairly large brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard and then I'll right click and make sure that the hardness is set to 0% so that we're using a very soft brush. Now there's a couple of options up here in the options bar that we need to evaluate before using the tool. The first one is the range so of the colors we are wanting to darken do they fall inside the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights? To show you what I mean, I'm going to click on the second tab here inside CS4 to bring up the image that was previously behind our Stormy Skies image. And here we see what those terms actually refer to. So the shadows are the darker regions of the image, the highlights are the brightest areas. So in this case, we're talking about the sky and the midtones catch everything that fall in between the shadows and the highlights. And here's a histogram in the top left corner to illustrate my point further from a more technical stance. Okay, so I'll switch back to the stormy skies image and even though you may think this particular sky falls inside the shadows of the image, if I press the I key on the keyboard to access the eyedropper and then press the F8 key to open up the info panel you can see that as I drag around inside the sky, the RGB values, which are measured from 0 to 255, are falling inside the midtones of the image. They're around about the 150 to 180 mark. So I'll hide the info panel, and then I'll switch back to the burn tool by hitting the letter O on the keyboard, and I'll go ahead and select midtones. Now the next option we have access to is the exposure option and that allows us to control how much burning we're actually applying to each brush stroke. Generally you're going to want a fairly low amount, especially if you're working with portrait shots and skin tones perhaps, but with this particular image we can afford to go a little further, so I'm going to hit a value of 25%. Now if I were to turn the airbrush option on, I would apply an amount of burning to the image that matches the amount of time I have my mouse depressed on the image, just like a spray can. Finally, the Protect Tones option, which is new to CS4 and switched on by default, as you can see, attempts to protect the tones and color of the image and stop them flattening out as we apply the burning. So we're going to find this option especially useful when working with skin tones and portrait shots. It's going to work out very nicely on the skies as well, so we'll leave it on here too. If you haven't got this option then it's worth just keeping in mind that the burn tool can be quite harsh at times. So another good reason to keep the exposure low and apply generally very gently throughout your image. 
So without any further ado, I'll go ahead and burn the sky in the image by just dragging over it once. That's not quite enough, so I'll add another pass of burning by dragging over it a second time. And now we start to see a more dramatic effect in the sky. And if you feel that you've gone too far, then you can either undo and start again, or you can take advantage of either the history panel, or you can use that top secret fade command, which is found, if I go up here to the edit menu, there you see it right there, the fade command, which will fade the edits of the burn tool in this particular case. So just to show you how far we've come right here, I'm going to hit the F12 key to revert the image back to its original state. And then I'm going to hit Control Z to see the effect that we applied. So I can use that Control Z shortcut to see the before and after versions of the image. So here's the before version. And then here's the after version with our burning applied to the image. Well, I hope you found this video tutorial here at freephotoshop.com to be helpful. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>